February 12th is, of course, Abraham Lincoln's birthday, but by now you probably know it's also Charles Darwin's. They were born the same day, same year, 1809, within hours of each other. And this year they would have been 200 years old. I know, it's sad when they're taken from us so young. Well, gone they are, but hardly forgotten. Lincoln must be the most remembered and best-loved president of all time. He is immortalized in the names of over 50 U.S. cities and counties, countless schools, insurance companies and automobiles, a submarine, and an aircraft carrier. His face is carved into stone on Mount Rushmore. He's on the five and the ubiquitous penny, and he rears his distinctive head in the strangest places, all through pop culture. He's seen here talking to Bart Simpson. Hi, Abe. Hello, Bart. Talking to Homer Simpson. Ooh, after you, Mr. Pennyface. Talking to Captain Kirk. Do you drink whiskey? Occasionally, why? He does a lot of commercials. We're here with Abe Lincoln, who shall we say is a little peeved? There are even conventions of Abraham Lincoln impersonators. Eat your heart out, Grover Cleveland. My earliest thinking about Lincoln is found on this wide-ruled paper, circa second grade. And not everything that's been said about the great emancipator is absolutely true, but I think this holds up. Abraham Lincoln was born February 12th, 1809. He was born in the state of Kentucky. He was born in a log cabin. Most of his neighbors lived in cabins too. Can't argue with that, really. And what about Charles Darwin? He has been deified and demonized ever since the publication of what many consider to be the greatest scientific book ever written, The Origin of Species. I'm almost embarrassed to say I only finally started reading the book myself. If you've read it, don't tell me how it ends. I'm kidding. In fact, it doesn't end. And that's one of the big lessons Darwin taught us. We are not the final destination, the end product of evolution. We are one of the latest chapters in an ongoing story. So, like Lincoln, Darwin raised our consciousness. He saw a kind of equality, not just for varieties of men, but for all life. Yet, he has been at the heart of an argument lasting 150 years and spanning the Scopes Monkey Trial and the Flying Spaghetti Monster. A person either believes that God created this process or believes that it was an accident and that it just happened all on its own. In the American South, where there is perhaps the strongest opposition to the teaching of evolution, farmers for decades have been battling insects that keep evolving resistance to one insecticide after another. And in courtrooms, every day, freedom and incarceration, life and death, are decided by DNA evidence, which would be meaningless if not for our understanding of evolution. Of course, we're still learning the details of how it operates, but the big picture, the fact that we're all descended from a common ancestor, is beyond question. Since Darwin's time, it has been bolstered by progress in many fields of science. Geology, paleontology, comparative anatomy, genetics, and nuclear physics. Sometimes I think the fact that so many people still don't believe in evolution might be the strongest evidence that we really aren't evolving. But I'll choose to see it instead as an indication of how slow the process is. It took billions of years for a single-celled organism to blossom into the myriad life forms we see today. And like evolution itself, the acceptance of radical ideas is sometimes painfully slow. There was so much opposition to Lincoln, we fought a bloody civil war. But that didn't stop him. It resulted in his being the first U.S. president assassinated, but that didn't stop his ideas. Yes, it took 145 years from the Emancipation Proclamation to the election of our first black president. But some of us didn't even expect to see that in our lifetime. And yes, millions of people are still resistant to the idea of evolution. But if Darwin seems to have knocked us off some pedestal, and like Copernicus and Galileo removed us from the center spotlight, we needn't feel diminished because we've learned that we're a part of something bigger than we previously imagined. Look around. We are related to every living thing on this planet. And that requires an adjustment in our thinking. For instance, we know apes are our closest cousins, but we never have them over. Is that cool? No, it isn't. But we're learning. So, as always, we find ourselves midway along the journey of our lives. 
And thanks to leaders like Lincoln and Darwin, we have cause for optimism that we're gaining a better understanding of ourselves and our place in the universe. So Abe, Chuck, happy birthday to you and many more.